I love Christmas. I think it's a safe bet to say I love Christmas probably more than most people you've ever met. And I love all of it. I love the music. I love the decorations. I love the commercials. I, I love it all. And mostly I love the gifts. When I was a little kid, it was because Santa gave me really amazing stuff. I mean, that guy, it was like he could read my mind. And once I'd outgrown Santa, I very quickly came to appreciate the gift-giving talents of my parents. It wasn't just that they were going off my list and checking everything off. They went a lot further than that. They put a lot of time and effort and energy and thought into these gifts that they gave to me and to my two younger brothers. The one that I remember most from my childhood was the Christmas that we finally got our Atari 2600. <laughs> and my brothers and I each got our own individual games to go with it. And I got Superman. I didn't even know there was a Superman game. And there is a picture in a family album somewhere where I am literally jumping up and down for joy so fast you can't tell who I am. <laughs> that was how perfect this gift was. The thing is, because my parents are willing to go off the reservation and try things that might be risky, fairly often they get something that is off, or weird, or just wrong. <laughs> the prime example for me of this was the year they gave me a Bee Gees album. <laughs> now, I've never been really into the Bee Gees, or disco. It was on cassette and I didn't have a tape player. And disco had been rather famously declared dead about two years earlier. I still wonder about that one. The tension between these two tendencies came together Christmas of 1983. Uh, I was 13, and my youngest brother had just outgrown Santa himself. And my parents realized that for the first time since the Nixon administration, they weren't going to have to wait until three little boys went to bed and fell asleep before they could wrap and put all the presents under the tree. So they came to me, very excited, and asked if it would be OK if they put presents under the tree as they bought them and got them wrapped. Now, it might seem odd that they came to their 13-year-old son for permission for this, but I was a real stickler for tradition, and I maintain it's their fault because they made me love Christmas so much. We had to have the same thing for dinner. We had to do the presents in the same order. We had to watch every special. Nothing could change. But I was okay with it, and the reason was simple. As much as I love Christmas traditions, the thing I love more than that is anticipation. I love that feeling of knowing that something great's about to happen, but not knowing quite what it's going to be. So I said, sure, no problem, because I figured I would have days or weeks of just getting to sit and feel and hold and <laughs> shake my presence and just imagine what they'd be. So right after Thanksgiving, the tree went up. And yes, it was a plastic tree that was part of the tradition that no evergreens in our house. <laughs> Presents started showing up under the tree very quickly. And each day, there'd be something new. And I'd go, and I'd, I'd check it out, and I'd rattle it. And it was as much fun as I thought it would be. It was working out great. About a week and a half before Christmas, I came home. And there was a big box that had appeared under the tree. I went and checked it out, and the label was made out to the Shear family. That meant it was a family gift, and we didn't get those every year. And when we did, it was usually something really amazing. It was about this big, by this deep, by this tall, and I knew right away what it was. It had to be a VCR. Now, remember, this was 1983. VCRs were still a big deal. They'd been available on the market commercially for a few years. If this had been two or three years earlier, it would have been a ridiculous extravagance. Two or three years later, they were fairly commonplace. But 1983 was the sweet spot. 
my brothers got home a few minutes later and I showed them the new gift and I said, it's gotta be a VCR. They weren't so sure, they had their own ideas and because I wanted this so much, I wanted them to believe it too. I did something really out of character. I went to my mom and asked for a hint. And she thought for a minute and said, well, it's something that the whole family will enjoy and we'll use it almost every day. Well, that was it for me. That, that was more than enough evidence. I took that to my brothers and I explained and somehow convinced them that indeed it was a VCR. And we started imagining all the cool stuff we were gonna get to do. Finally, we'd be able to take our favorite shows and save them forever. We could finally get a membership to Errol's video. <laughs> We could have movie parties with our friends and they'd come over and it was going to change our lives and this was going to be the best Christmas ever. Christmas morning rolls around and I want to get right to that big gift. I say, can we start with the big gift? And parents say, no, we'll do this the way we always do. You boys open your presents. So we did that and I'm opening my presents and I'm sure I got a lot of great stuff that year but I don't remember anything. <laughs> I didn't remember it two seconds after I put it down because I wanted to get that shiny VCR and hook it up to our TV and get tape and stuff off at HBO. We finally finished with the presents. I think my mother knew how tough this was for me to wait because she asked my dad if he'd make her a cup of tea. <laughs> Once she'd gotten that, she said, all right, boys. Go ahead and open the big gift. So I dove under the tree and dragged that thing out in the middle of the living room. My brothers gathered around and we dug in. Wrapping paper flew everywhere and there, revealed in all of its glory, was a set of TV trays. <laughs> boys. Um, we just stared at each other in shock. I, I didn't even know what to think. I, I, I thought maybe it was a joke. And then I remembered something that had happened a few years earlier. My dad had gotten my mom a really nice necklace and he wrapped the box, very pretty, and then he got the box for a hair dryer and put the present in there and then wrapped that up so that when she opened it, she thought she'd gotten a hair dryer. So I figured, okay, maybe this is a joke. So I turned to my dad and I said, should we open the box? He said, sure, and handed me a Swiss Army knife. And I sliced the tape open, handed him back the knife, opened the flaps. <laughs> TV trays. <laughs> my brothers and I stared at each other, looked down at the ground, and after a few seconds, my mom said, well, what do you think? <laughs> I thought I wanted Santa back. I thought I was being punished for some horrible thing I'd done that I didn't even know. I thought I'd just been royally screwed. I somehow mumbled a, it's great, thanks. My brothers did the same but it was pretty clear that we were all really disappointed and it was probably the least festive Christmas we'd ever had. When the holidays rolled around the next year, I sat my parents down. <laughs> and I told them in no uncertain terms was a single present to appear beneath that tree before Christmas Eve. They could do it during the day, that was fine, but I wasn't going to have another disappointment, like the TV trace. They agreed. And so the next Christmas came around, that evening, or that Christmas Eve, presents go under the table and there's another big family gift. I don't even look at it. But this time it was a VCR. <laughs> and my brothers and I were overjoyed. To this day, I still don't know if my parents were maybe playing a long con on us. <laughs> that maybe they really wanted to make sure we appreciated this expensive piece of sophisticated technology. I've asked 
asked them directly, and they won't give me a straight answer. History had the ultimate final laugh on this, though. That VCR that we finally got was a Betamax. 